the Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, what you need to know if you're considering any type of minimally invasive facial rejuvenation. We're talking about new breakthroughs today with us. We have an expert on the topic, Dr. Garris. Dr. Garris, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. All right. Now, before we get into uh, today's topic, I've got a list of questions here. Tell me a little bit about your center. I mean, what, who's your typical patient and what are the different procedures you do? All right. Well, uh, we really don't have a typical patient. Um, there is such a well-defined range of procedures that we do that you could look at somebody in their 20s who says, you know, I'm tired of shaving my hair on my legs or my underarms and I want the convenience of waking up and going. So we have people in their 20s who are looking at laser hair removal, people in their 20s who say, you know, geez, I woke up one day and I looked at my mother in the morning and I don't want to go there. And so how do I start preventing the aging process? Okay. Um, so they, they looked in the mirror and saw their mother. Yeah, they start to see like some the changes. Resemblance. You know, the they tell you they see their mother. Yeah, you know, they look at their mother and they say, you know, geez, she's starting to get a little bit of jowls, and, and I don't okay. want that. And, All right. And so, how do I prevent that? And, and at that age, if we can get early intervention with just home care, retin A, sunblocks, things like that, then they do great. People in their 30s, the mom who's just delivered, you know, her second or third kid, she's done. She looks at her face and says, hey, I got a little pigmentation that won't go away, or I got a little bulge in my tummy that won't go away. Uh, and now it's time to take care of myself, and these kids are running me ragged, and, and I got to do something for myself. Uh, the, the 40, 50-year-old who's going through changes in life, who start to say, you know, geez, my marriage didn't work out. Now I'm back into a scene that I didn't even know. You know what do I do 20, 30 years later? I got to okay. look good. I'm getting involved in new relationships. I have to put my best foot forward. Do they tell you this on the consults? Absolutely. Absolutely. All the time. All the Absolutely. Time. And a lot of times we have to rein people in because they go a little overboard, you know, and, and you know, uh, we see people who the economy, it's no secret, the economy has kind of tanked and people have either lost their jobs or they're not retiring when they thought they were going to retire. It's a young man's world in some industries and, and you have somebody in their 50s or 60s who's competing against people in their 20s and 30s and they have to Are look more good. and more men coming in? I mean, do men come in? Absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's still predominantly women. Men have a past. They grow distinguished. Now, there's a fine line between okay. growing old and having wrinkles and, and, and overdoing it versus a little bit of gray hair or soft wrinkle hair or there. You know, for myself personally. When I first started in this industry, I was in my late 20s. The biggest question I got is, you're too young to be a doctor. Now, I don't get that anymore. So that's, you know, that, right. that, that's kind of a good thing for me in my industry. I know your age. You look about five to 10 years younger than your age. And that's great. And I even know? said when I first met you, I said, are you dipping into your own uh, lasers or something? Yeah, absolutely. So you use that stuff. Absolutely. You know, okay. um, age, can be, age can be fought. And, and so, you know, if it's accessible and we have the technology, why not? So you do, I mean, you do all the, uh, you know, laser treatments, fractionated lasers, uh, Botox fillers. Absolutely. That whole bit. And you have that new hot machine, this, uh, th this cool sculpting kind of a liposuction. Yeah, so it's a non-invasive body contouring treatment. So uh, what's better and it than works? to get it? And it works. I got to have it, you come back and talk about that. Absolutely. A lot of absolutely. questions for that. Let's talk about your background. Very interesting background. You know, um, you... You, and we should mention, you have a lot of experience. I mean, I guess you've done over 10,000 Botox procedures. Uh, we've been doing been this for busy. a long time, yeah. So, I mean, we've gotten the exposure, we've gotten the experience. Uh, the community has been very kind to us. We've grown astronomically, and so we're, doing, we're very fortunate. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's the results? Because you said you don't really do a lot of advertising or anything. No, we don't do any, actually. Okay. Um, you know, well, I shouldn't say that. Our advertising is in the people that walk in and out of our doors. And so, okay. uh, you know, I'm not a general surgeon who picks out, who takes out your appendix and you judge my work by my sutures because you can't see what I did inside. Everything we do is right there. And so, you know, if you go out and see your family and you look at your brother and your brother says, God, you look good. What are you doing? Or you come out. I'm and, seeing Dr. Garish. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes we're a hidden <laughs> secret. So, you know, okay. we, people may not admit it. But yeah, I mean, people know what we do because it's not hidden. So you started off as an internist? Started so, off, I, mean, I mean, how'd you make that change? Well, actually, going back further, I did my undergraduate degree in engineering. And so when I did my residency in DC in internal medicine, there was an opportunity to work with a plastic surgeon who was looking for residents to learn minimally invasive or non-invasive cosmetics. What a great marriage, you know, uh, physics of, of lasers and the design of lasers in medicine. 
And so I started moonlighting uh, with the plastic surgeon and, and kind of learned under his wing. So you never practiced as an internist? I finished residency, went right into what I was so doing. So lasers right off the bat? Lasers right off the bat. Interesting. So that was, I mean, you were one of the pioneers then, or one of the first guys. Mid-90s, yeah. Back in, and the, the problem back then was, you know, we had lasers, but they didn't work well. And God, we've come such a great way today, you know, because the, the, the treatments, the technology, is leap years ahead of what you say we, you're very skeptical before you use the technology well you know there's a lot you've out been there. burned before you we, said we've, we've been burned before you know we've bought machines and they're not cheap um and so it's hard when you buy a machine and a couple months in later you got to throw it in the closet because it just didn't work um but with experience you learn you know it, it just makes good fundamental sense that this is going to this is going to work it fits into the lifestyle because not only does it have to work i mean i could have the best treatment in the world but if no one's willing to do it then because of the downtime, because it hurts, then what good is it, you know? Okay. Um, so that's the big thing. So it's multifaceted. Okay, so a woman in her 40s, let's say, or, or late 30s, uh, doesn't like the way she's aging. When she comes in, I mean, how do you assess, or, or what, if you had to say there's a, an approach or philosophy that you have with the aging face, what right. is it? Well, multifactorial. I mean, number one is we have to let, talk to the patient and find out what she's willing or not willing to do. Uh, there's a lot of patients out there who love the concept of Botox. They think it's great, it's quick, it's easy, and they get phenomenal results. There's other people who say, you're not injecting that toxin in me. Okay. I, I, I don't want it, um, so let's talk about other options. So number one, it comes down to what does the patient want? What are they looking for? Are they looking for the best possible results, but will come in every three months, or are they looking for a treatment that may give them more moderate results, but they're good for two to three years. Okay. So, and sometimes it's a combination of two. If we can go into a patient, let's say, who has some sun damage, has some skin elasticity issues, a few wrinkles, we can go in and resurface the skin, and we can soften the wrinkles. We can tighten the skin, reverse uh, the sun spots. And then on top of that, add Botox to the wrinkles, so when the Botox wears off, they're returning to a higher baseline. And so there's less fluctuation in their appearance. So everybody's different. So, and generally you don't correct one problem with just one tool. And so, you know, when we look at the aging face, you know, there's a few things that we want to look at. Volume in the face, that's important. As we age, okay. our skulls shrink, so we lose volume. We lose fat in our face, so things start to sag. So if we can restore volume with fillers like Restylane, like Juvederm, Radius, any fillers, and, and they all have their pros and cons, then we can restore volume and pick the face up. Then what we do is we address the quality of skin that we've lifted. That's fractional resurfacing. Maybe that's a little bit of Botox. Uh, and then once we've infused all of these things and the patient walks away, how do they maintain that best? You know, do they, they, they can't go and smoke a cigarette and eat a Big Mac. You okay. know, so what does that mean? Does that mean that means sunblock? Maybe that's some Retin-A at home. The great technologies in skincare, the strides that we've made in products. 20 years ago, the sunblocks weren't as good. The products weren't as good. Now, we talked, you know, on in my green room on the couch, and, and I, you know, you know my age. Yep. And so if I came to you, you know, for the next five years, seven years, ten years, what kind of an impact do you think? Huge. That means if I followed your advice, you think yeah. I would look... About the same age in 10 years, yeah, possibly? And, and, and I think you asked me the question, do, you know, do I believe we can slow down aging? Yeah. I don't believe it. I know it. We do it every day. We have patients that have come over the last 10 years have been seeing us, and, and if I showed you their photos, you'd say you'd mix their before with their after. They look better today than they did 10 years ago. Really? And so skin is like exercising, okay? If I told you, hey, don't go to the gym it's not going to change your life. You're not going to live healthier. It's not going to help you cardiovascularly. You'll be able to go and do whatever you want. Would you say, wow, that's great? Or would you say, I'm full of it? Yeah, you're full of it. Yeah. I'm full okay, of it. Okay. And, and the skin's the same way. It needs to be exercised. We can exercise your skin to produce more collagen, be healthy, reverse sun damage. And logically, if you can do that on a regular basis, you're going to slow down the aging process. And it works beautifully. Okay, let's talk then. Okay, let, let's start. I have a list here. Spots, uh, you know, like age spots, redness, unevenness of color on the face. What's out there? What are you using? Uh, you know, it depends. Uh, you know, the, you, you mentioned a multitude of things. Uh, we have lasers that can address all of them. Uh, if somebody has spots and they also have some wrinkles that they want to treat, 
than fractional resurfacing, whether it's the fraxel laser, the erbium, or the CO2, which is lighter versions versus a heavier version uh, of the fraxel lasers, then uh, you know that fits in well. If you tell me, hey, I have a few sunspots here, and, and I got to get back to work, and I can't have any downtime, and it's got to have makeup cover it, you know, because I'm going to be on the air tomorrow, then we have a laser that specifically addresses that. Um, so y there's not one tool that addresses everything. But sometimes there's a tool that will address a lot of things that you have, and it's crazy to use five different lasers if the fractional resurfacing will do it all at once. Okay, so you're a big fan of fractional lasers. I love it. And what, love it. I mean, how does it work? And, and, and the easiest way, you know, and it's, it's incredibly complex, but the easiest way to describe it is, have you ever seen how they go and aerate the lawns? Come fall, they pull out the plugs of the grass on the golf courses, and that lets all the water and nutrients get in. Fractional okay. resurfacing is microscopically doing that to your face. What are the benefits of that? Well, instead of burning all of the skin off with a heavy duty laser having weeks or months of downtime, we're hitting a spot here and a spot here, but leaving an island of skin healthy in between. So you're not healing just from the bottom up because we burnt off all the skin. You're healing from the bottom up and from the sides. So essentially what we're really doing is we're giving you a small dose of a heavy duty treatment multiple times to minimize the complications, to minimize your downtime, and give you the results had you done this big treatment and had two weeks of downtime. What are these non-invasive techniques? I mean, uh, do you have patients that, that tell you that people tell them they look 10 years younger, five years younger? Uh, you know, I'm trying to put, get a, a, a number on this, but I mean, if, if tell... yeah, you know, everybody's different. They look good. You know, the best thing, you know, I go to work and I love my job and, okay. and, and, it, and I'm passionate about my job. Um, the best thing for me is hearing a patient come back and say, hey, you know, uh, I went to my reunion and, and, and people can't believe how good I look. Or, you know, I went home for dinner at my, at my mom's house and my sister was there and she's eight years younger than me, but I look better than her. Um, those are the good things to hear. Those are the things that, you know, you say, you know, we're changing lives and people feel better about themselves. Do you see uh, changes in self-esteem? Huge, huge. I mean, you know, skin is important. Your looks are important. Okay, I mean, yeah. Um, society puts huge pressures on us to look good. And people are more successful based on how they look, whether it's weight, whether it's skin. You go to any teenager who has active breakouts and active, ask him how his or her, how his confidence and how good their self-esteem is. And I guarantee you they've suffered. Why? Because skin is important. Clarity, no pores, you know, the pristine look, that's, that's what everybody aspires to. Um, so yeah, you see changes in your confidence level, that affects your relationships with other people. That affects your performance on your job. That makes so it's you a boost up. in self-esteem. Huge, huge. Do you see them dressing differently and, uh, you, you and uh, you acting know, differently? Yeah, you know, I mean, the funniest thing is, is we had a patient who, uh, for body contouring, had a little pooch in her stomach, that, you know, just a little bulge, uh, very self-conscious, always hiding it. You know, we treated that with the cool sculpting. And uh, next time she came in a follow-up, she had a belly button ring. Okay. You know, so she, she wanted to actually draw attention to the area and accessorize it. So, it, you know, which is nice. So at what age should somebody come in and start getting laser treatment, fractionated laser treatments, Botox? I mean, uh, what age? What, 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 when uh, should know, somebody do something? Yeah, about there it? is no age. Uh, you know, I, I would argue that, you know, we're all, we're all aging. You're yeah. aging. I'm yeah. aging. Our kids are aging. You know, someone starts in their 20s, if they can get on a good preventative care, they don't need the laser treatments. They need good skin care, sunblock reinforced, maybe a little Retin-A, maybe just a good uh, alpha hydroxy for some exfoliation. As we get older and you start to see the signs of aging, you start to see the frown line, you start to get all of a sudden the comment, wow, why do you look angry? Why do you look tired? And you're like, I feel great. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not, I don't, I, can relate I, to that. I feel good. You know, so there's Botox. Botox fits into that realm. Um, so it, it's really when do the signs and symptoms start addressing? I can tell you right now, if you go into Wisconsin or Michigan, you know, people don't age as rapidly as they do in Florida or here in San Diego. They're not exposed to the sun as often. Um, okay, good. So crow's feet, crow's feet, Botox. Crow's feet, Botox or Dysport. You know, Dysport's the new kid on the block. Um, and they're, and, you know, everybody puts them together, but they are different. And there's what do benefits. You like? What do you like? Uh, I like Botox and the frown lines. And I love Dysport on the forehead and, and the crow's feet. Why is and that? I'll Last tell you why. Yeah. Uh, some people it does. You know, the majority it does, but not everybody. The molecular size or the small, you know, we were talking about cars earlier. Dysport's like the Prius. 
okay? okay? And Botox is like your SUV. We inject the SUV into your skin and it doesn't spread, it sticks there. So we get a real good, strong relaxation. So for relaxation. the frown line right there? So for the frown lines, you don't want to frown. You don't want a little bit of a frown. Generally, we want to just knock that out and we don't want it to spread to droop your eyelid. So Botox stays still, doesn't okay, travel good. very interesting, easy, interesting. but it locks it in. Now on your forehead, you want to get a more natural feathered in look. So the fact that the, that Prius or the Dysport can go into the skin and spread a little bit, it gives a much more natural, plus you get a little bit of movement. So that works. All right. All right. Um, around the eyes. I mean, have you ever seen somebody who has Botox in their forehead and you can tell exactly where that spots they stopped because they have no wrinkles and then all of a sudden they get a bunch of wrinkles up here. Well, it's because the Botox stayed, but if we can naturally feather that in, then that looks beautiful. Okay. Okay. Now, now this Dysport, it lasts a little bit longer. Is that true? Yeah, for some people. For okay. most. For most. All right. Now, what about uh, uh, saggy skin? Saggy skin's tough. You know, um, surgical candidates when it gets to an extreme. You know, okay. we, we, there's a role for the things that we do. When we're talking about mild to elasticity issues, you can look at the CO2, the fractional CO2s, the fractional erbiums, which fall into that fractal category. They will give some nice tightening. When we talk about thermage or skin tightening, and that's probably... You like thermage. I like thermage with a twist. Okay. Okay. Um, I think thermage has gone through some real bad growing pains over the last 11 years since their evolution. They came out and they said, hey, we're the non-surgical facelift. You, you don't need surgery. Come in. You're going to get a lift. We're going to treat you. We're going to lift your jowls. But wasn't that the eyebrows. doctors overselling it, though, more so or maybe? And the company. Okay. Both. okay. It was both. You know, and, and the company bought in. You know, there was a couple cases where it hit the news and they showed a best case scenario, a home run. Oh, you would swear this person it was on Oprah. Surgery. I think it was launched on Oprah. Uh, Oprah, you know, and she got a little backlash from that a little bit, okay. you know. Um, but you know, so the but it works. Here. But I mean, I mean, fast forwarding to today, if you use it the right way, it's a wonderful anti aging treatment. So you interesting know, anti aging treatment. You have, you know, we talked about, we just talked about, you lose bone mass and you lose fat in your face, and those are probably two of the three major reasons why your face ages. The last is collagen. We lose collagen. So Mother Nature, which is genetics, natural aging, uh, the sun, chemicals, environmental pollutants, you go swimming, chlorine, all of those things break down your collagen, your aging. So Mother Nature is taking withdrawals every day. Okay, okay. So we need to start creating deposits. Well, how do you do that? Well, Thermage puts a huge infusion of collagen. Is it heat? Treatment. Is it it's heat? heat? It's radio frequency that goes deep down into the dermis or the lower levels of the skin, creates heat. And it tricks your body into thinking there's an injury. And part of the healing response okay, to this injury it. is building new collagen. So we're fighting Mother Nature. We're infusing Mother Nature's taking out. Where you settle is the balance So there can the be some tightening. Absolutely. Effect. There so are people. So if you catch it early, though, I mean, if you, if you catch somebody early and use these procedures, yes, that's where it Absolutely. really works. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is much easier to prevent than it is to reverse. Always. And that probably extends through most aspects of life. 40-year-old woman watching this comes into you. She's going to probably at 50, in your opinion, probably look about the same. Maybe even better. It's possible. I mean, if she eats yeah, right, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it, it, there, it's multifactorial, but it's not outside of the realm of possibilities. Yes. And, and, you know, maybe she looks a little bit older, but not 10 years older. Maybe she looks younger, you know, but there's so many things that affect our life. Stress. You know, one of, our, one of the classic examples of somebody who comes in, is they say, you know, I was doing really good. My friends always said how good I look. I was, and I was so proud of myself. And then all of a sudden I looked in the mirror and I feel like I aged 10 years in the last year. Yeah. And, and so, and, and whether they know the reason or they went through a divorce or the loss of a loved one or the job. Or so the that economies. can be reversed. And yeah, and that's, where, and that's where they come in. And that's like you look at pictures start. and say, boy, I look good back then, just Absolutely. five years ago. Absolutely. You know, they say, well, geez, I'm starting to see the jowls. I'm starting to see the wrinkles and, or the downturned mouth that makes me look angry. And so that's the initial. So technology is finally there, or almost there. I mean, to where you could really have a huge impact. Fifteen years ago, I would tell you the technology was a waste of money. Okay, now leaps and bounds, and I can tell you in the next ten years, huge changes. I mean, if technology didn't keep advancing, we'd all be still driving Model Ts, and we're not. Every year, the cars get better. I mean, I have a well-known plastic surgeon that has the technology. Because Randy, if I get them early, thirty-eight, thirty-seven, you know, forty, that I could delay any surgery until their 60s. Yeah. He's convinced of that. I yeah. mean, do you and, believe that too? And, and I'll even go further. 
I will tell you that the plastic surgeons who are resistant to this technology and say, I was trained to cut and that's all I'm going to do, 10 to 15 years from now will be out of business. They, yeah. they, they'll be extreme Well, he cases. told me that they just kind of don't believe it works. Yeah. And, and you know what? They have every right to believe that because there have been a lot of people who come but out. You know it works. A lot of companies that come out that did have equipment that didn't work. And, and it's, a, it's a muddy industry. And you have to pick and choose what makes sense, what doesn't okay. make sense. Now, now, we're running out of time. But moving on to fillers, though, with facial fillers, and you're a big fan of fillers. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the problem, and I'll put my own opinion here, that, that, that I feel like I could spot fillers. I mean, it makes them look puffy or, or, or bulged out. Yeah. Um, well, and, and that's the person who did it, quite honestly. Okay, good. Um, you know, the goal is to make you look younger, but make it look natural. And but you've seen that puffy... Oh, absolutely. I mean, you see it with movies. I, I've similar. sent patients away who've asked me for that. And I said, you know, and, and we talked about this earlier, you know, I don't advertise. My advertisement is every single person who walks in the door and leaves. Okay. The last thing I want is somebody walking away, and as they turn to the side, all you see is big lips. And then they say, wow, what happened? Oh, Dr. Garris did that to me. You know, that's not a good advertisement. So natural is the key. I mean, we're here in California, you know, Newport Beach, you know, uh, you know, there's some big lips going on. Yeah. But I talk to surgeons and they say that, you know, Randy, sometimes that's the surgeon's eye. They think that looks good. Well, and, and you know, art, you go and see sculptures and art and everybody has different visions. Now, we've and talked on the phone. You say you're more about natural. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I would rather, so if, if somebody came to me and said, hey, you know, my cheeks are becoming sunken in and I'd like to lift my face again. And, and I want to get back to where I was in my 20s or my 30s. I would rather take the conservative approaches. Let's put some Restylane in there and, and let's stop. Let everything settle down. I can almost guarantee you we're going to need a little bit more. But let's get you comfortable to it. Let's see what you, how you respond with the swelling that may last a day. So there's an art to away. this. There's an art to this. Absolutely. You know, if you're going to visit the Grand Canyon and you want to see it, do you run to the edge and hope you stop in time? No. Yeah, you go to the edge, you go close, and then you take a slower step. And it's the same with cosmetics because once it's in there, you know, we can melt the hyaluronic acids. We can remove it with hyaluronidase. We don't want to do that. And so, I, you know, and then your other choice is you got to wait for it to go away. You know, you so as a practitioner, to do it right, you believe that you have to kind of start a little slow and then see how it takes and then add more later? A little bit or no? A little bit, you know, and then as you get to know a patient, you know what your volumes have been, that they look good. But you've done, I, you know, I looked at your bio, like, like thousands of these filler procedures. Absolutely. Okay. So can you look at a patient and go... This is going to be great. Yeah, absolutely. You can. But you can also look at a patient who's nervous and say, let's take this slow. Because okay. they're not, you know. The, I had one patient once who convinced me. You know, she, had, she hadn't even waxed in her life. And she convinced me because she was getting married, she needed the fractional CO2 laser. And, and against my judgment, you know, I was like, you know, maybe we should start you off slower. Maybe try a few other things. She went in. We did the treatment. She looked gorgeous afterwards. But it was a bumpy road, a little anxiety. Am I ever going to look normal again? Because that's a because rough, the healing process. The healing process. It's normal. Everything she did was normal, you know. And thank God she had a beautiful fiance who's calmed her down and kept her. But the anxiety. And the one thing I learned, and that was about seven years ago. The one thing I learned is, you know, you can't take somebody, and if, even if it's the best treatment for them, they may not be ready for it. They have to be. They have to mentally be there. And so part of our job is not only being aesthetically attuned to what people need, but almost to some extent being a little psychiatrist, a psychologist and seeing what can this person handle? What can they not handle? Interesting. Where are the steps? Now, by the way, and things we haven't mentioned, and we are out of time, but yeah. like the neck or the, 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 the chest area, upper Absolutely. chest on women, mm -hmm. those are all great areas? Uh, all great areas and usually neglected, back of the hands. You, somebody asks you, how old am I? Look at their hands. You know, one of the things you said on the phone is that you tell patients that they've hit the lottery. Yeah. Um, or at least you told me that on the phone. I mean, yeah, what, absolutely. Do you, you know, say that to patients? Uh, yeah, well, you know. Or you say it amongst each other. The, no, or self for the patients. You know, because here's my thing. I don't want to, I'm busy and I take a lot of pride in my work. And I don't want to waste time on somebody that I'm going to treat. And then they're just going to go out and ruin everything that we've just done. So it's important to protect Good. what we've done. And so... Yeah, winning the lottery, you come into a whole bunch of money. We're giving them a whole bunch of rejuvenation, more collagen, tightening. And so now they have to protect it. You know, I saw an interesting statistic that 50% um, of people who win the lottery, like 10 years later, have filed for bankruptcy at some point. Okay, okay. And so, you know, we want these people to protect it. You don't want to come in every year and do a fractional CO2 and have a week of downtime.
But if we can do that, and then we can get you to use sunblocks and, and retin-A's and creams, and maybe come into the office and do a lighter treatment that helps keep stimulating, fighting that war of mother nature deposits withdrawals, you can maintain everything we had. It's almost your, like your financial advisor. Are you a perfectionist, by the way, at this? Uh, do people ever call you that? Um, I get a job in the house, and it'll take me 10 years because it's got to be perfect. Okay. And that definitely correlates into my job. And... Uh, would you stack your results against anybody? I mean, you know, I, I, I told you that, that, yeah. that the best guys, it seems like in, the, in, in any business, secretly think that they're one of the best. Yeah. Is that the way you feel about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people in this industry. They do general dermatology and they do cosmetic dermatology or plastic surgeons. They do surgeries and then they do fillers. This is all we do. I don't do general dermatology. I don't do surgeries. This is it. And you've been doing and this since busy. the 90s. And we've been doing this for 15 years and this is it. This is prime time. And so we have gotten a lot of exposure and a lot of experience with what we do. And so, yeah, I mean, there's unparalleled. So you don't have to age uh, like your parents. I mean, so no. this is the new aging gracefully, Absolutely. would you say? Absolutely. Go this in. is the new aging gracefully. And the limitations in our technology today will be addressed in the future. So if you never let yourself, if you almost jump from rock to rock across a pond with the technology, jump from technology yeah. to technology, you will most likely always be a candidate for the newest, best thing. And you'll which never is, hear. Which is? Who knows? Stem who cells? Knows? Stem cells. We talked a little bit about it, it in yeah, the Stem cells are big. You know, I think there's a whole area of medicine coming out that will be regenerative cosmetics. You know, the next big kid in the block is focused ultrasound. No downtime. Great. Do tightening. you think in 20 years you're going to look about the way you do today? Yeah, maybe less a little hair. Is that right? Okay. So good. You're going to stop yourself. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Great information. And uh, so if somebody wants to contact you, obviously your website. Yep. Uh, will they meet with you on a consult? Absolutely. Every time? Okay, Absolutely. Good. Every okay. time. Thanks again for coming on the show. If you watch The Wellness Hour, leader in medical news and information, I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com. Just put in Dr. Garish or uh, non-invasive uh, facial rejuvenation or just non-invasive. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.